Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about one of our favorite bikes in the shop. It's called the Mustache Lundy. And this bike was one of the models that this company launched with in 2011 when they started. It's a French brand. They've really grown quite a bit in the short time that they've been in business. We really actually, Propel started in 2011, they started in 2011. When you first look at the Lundy, it's really clear that this bike is something different and unique. So the frame of the bike, it has this really low step and if you look at it, you might get the impression that, that maybe it's not gonna be that stiff or whatever, but actually that's furthest thing from the case. The way that they design this, it has a special tubing that only they use inside the tube, this, this rectangular shaped tubing, there's a round tube and then there's an X cross brace and it makes it super stiff, which is really ideal for this type of bike. So you have that ease of stepping in and out of the bike, but you still have the stiffness of a traditional triangle frame. And I really appreciate that. And the design of it is, is really striking. The lines and everything, the way it all goes together. And whenever I ride the bike, people always stop me and ask me about it. It's, it's kind of a cool experience. I mean, that happens quite a bit on e-bikes in general, but the design on this one is quite special. And all the colors that they offer on top of that is really cool as well. Now this type of frame design is becoming more and more popular, but Mustache is one of the early ones to really popularize this type of frame and to hit it really well from the beginning because of the way that they use this you know, special tube and everything. Many people will look at this bike and say, oh, that's a girl's bike, but I really don't think so. And, and it's really not presented as such. I mean, I ride this bike all the time and it's becoming more and more popular with men. It's just really easy to get on and off of. So the idea that you don't wanna take the convenience of being able to easily get it on and off the bike because you think that it's a, a woman's bike, I, I think that that doesn't really make sense. So especially in a city environment where you are hopping on and off the bike quite often, this makes a lot of sense. Some other things that make this bike particularly unique are all the different colors which are available. We took a look at this bike at Eurobike earlier last year and we'll show a little bit of that footage. It's got a powerful Bosch motor. Now it's available in a couple different versions. This particular model is the 26.3. It's also available as the 26.1. The 26.1 has the active line plus motor with 50 newton meters of torque, which is really pretty good. But the 26.3, which this version is, adds the suspension seat post, the performance line motor, which bumps up the torque to 65 Newton meters and it's really quite powerful. So I found this bike to be really zippy and just a lot of fun to, to ride around the city. It's got these really unique handlebars and this is part of what Mustache kind of gets its name for because they have these mustache style handlebars. So they're swept back, gives you that really upright seating position. And then the frame can actually accommodate all different rider heights, anywhere from around five foot upwards of 6'3", six, 6'4", six, because as the seat post goes up, it angles back. So that actually gives you more space if you're a taller rider. It's still gonna be a relatively upright ride, no matter what the rider height is, but it gives you a little bit more space. And another feature of this type of design is it makes it a little easier to put your feet down when you come to a stop. Really great for urban riding when you're stopping going all the time. Now this bike doesn't have any suspension. It uses a rigid fork, which really works well with the design of the frame, but it is still a very comfortable bike, mainly due to the tires. So this has a 26 by 2.35 wide tire, 2.35 inches. It's what's called a balloon tire. So you can run the tire a little bit lower pressure and it's made to handle that. It has a heavier duty sidewall. It's a tire really made for urban riding, has a little bit of tread to it. It could certainly handle some light uh, off-road, that sort of thing, more like dirt roads and that sort of stuff. Not, not real mountain bike trails. I, I wouldn't feel so comfortable. And this tire, it's, it's called the Schwabi Fat Frank, and it has the K-Guard, so it has a little extra puncture protection, and I find it's really well suited for this bike, and it, it definitely adds to the comfort quite a bit. Another detail we can check out while we're up front here is these fenders. Now, this is something you'll find on most mustache bikes, aside from their mountain bikes, and it's this double wall aluminum fender, really heavy duty, 
And you know, one of the things is talking to their design team is that they put these even on their entry level bikes. They, it's, this is part of their DNA, if you will, having a really good quality fender, having good handlebars, some of these details that make their bikes particularly unique. And I really appreciate that. So the Lundy's available with a couple different motor system and drivetrain options. This particular one is a 26.3 and it has the 10 speed derailleur, it's a Dior derailleur with a 10 speed cassette, it's 11 to 38. Pretty good range of gears and really plenty for city environment. So this one as the 26.3 has the top spec motor on it, it's the Bosch performance line. This is the generation 3, completely new for this year. It has 65 newton meters of torque. Now it's also available in the 26.1, which has the active line plus motor, a little less torque, but it also drops the price a little bit as well. So it might be something to consider if you're looking to save a little bit of money and you don't need as much power. You know, really in a relatively flat area, the active line plus is, is fine. But if you've got bigger hills, you might want to consider opting for this uh, performance line motor. It has a really nice chain cover here. Uh, I really appreciate that, that this design, it integrates well into the frame and it's, it keeps the chain really well enclosed. So this is nice if you're wearing nicer clothes and stuff like that, you really wanna protect them. Now this new generation three motor has a lot of improvements from the previous generation. One of the things at first looking at it has this really small footprint. They've improved the size of it pretty considerably. They've lowered the weight. And they also removed what's called the reduction gear the Generation 2 system has a reduction gear, which basically multiplies your pedaling two and a half times for every pedal revolution. This one doesn't have it, so they're able to lower the weight there and also lower the resistance. So when you pedal without power, there's practically no resistance in this motor. Now the Bosch system works on a technology called pedal assist. Basically the idea is you pedal and it provides assistance. Now there's three different sensors that they use to make this work. Inside the motor there's a sensor that senses how fast you're pedaling as well as another sensor that, that senses how hard you're pedaling called a torque sensor. Beyond that there's also a sensor that uses a magnet on the rear wheel and a speed sensor on the rear chainstay. That's measuring how fast the bike's going overall. Based on all this information, it's taking a thousand senses per second and providing assistance proportionate to what you request from it. Now you can get anywhere from 50% assistance to upwards of 300% assistance on the top level of assist. Now getting to the back of this bike, you can see this really heavy duty rear rack that they have. And this is custom made for them and it has several different mounting points, two on the, on the seat stay as well as mounted to the fender which has some additional support as well. This rack can carry up to 55 pounds. It has some special mounting options It's that can use the Ortlieb QL3 system which is really nice so uh, that's a special bag that can clip on and off which doesn't have hooks on it as a normal uh, pannier usually has. The battery on the bike is a Bosch 500 watt hour rear rack battery plenty of power, it's a 36 volt, 13.6 amp hour. And on average, I'd say you're probably gonna get somewhere around 30 miles or so out of the battery, but you can get upwards of 60, 70 miles easy if you're riding on the lower levels of assistance or really pushing it to its max, maybe you're gonna get around 20, 25 miles. You can charge the battery on or off the bike. To charge the battery on the bike, you're gonna open this little port here and you can plug the charger right in there to charge it off the bike, you're gonna use the key on the other side and you can remove the battery to charge it off the bike. It uses the same style charging port. They set up a really comfortable saddle on this bike. It's Cell Royale, relatively wide. It's perfect for that upright seating position, but it provides a lot of comfort as well. This bike is a 26.3, so it also has the suspension seat post, so that's gonna compress as you're going over bumps. It gives you some added comfort beyond just what the tires do. The 26.1 is gonna have a rigid seat post on it. So this bike's set up with the Bosch Intuvia display. It's a removable display. You just have this little tab here. You can take it on and off really easily. To turn the display on, we're just gonna tap the power button here. Takes just a couple seconds to power on. You know it's fully powered on. We have this 0.0, .0 miles per hour. So that's your miles per hour reading. You have your battery reading. 
and then you have the assistance level which you can change up and down with the thumb pad on the left side here. If I hit the plus button, I go into the first mode, eco, tour, sport, and turbo. You can get anywhere from 50 to upwards of 300%. This little empty bar right here, this is where you see the assistance level that you're getting out of the bike. There's 10 ticks and that will basically go up and down as the bike is providing assistance proportionate to what you put into it. You have the clock here. If you hit the I button, you're gonna see some of the other details, max speed, average speed, trip time, the range. The range is gonna vary based on the assistance level that you're in. Keep in mind that just because it says two batteries, it might be like 1.2 or something like that. So the battery life I know on this one's pretty low. I just pulled it out of the box this morning and got it going. So, and if we hit the I button again, we'll go into the odometer trip distance and then if you wanted to reset this you can hold the reset button down for just a couple seconds if you want to reset this you can hold the reset button down for a couple of seconds and it will reset that there you can also use the I button here if you wanted to and then to activate the lights you're going to tap this light button here now keep in mind whatever you leave the lights on when you turn the bike off it's going to be in that same setting when you turn it back on so if you want the lights to always be on just just you don't have to mess with it just turn them on once and they're always going to be on otherwise you know you could turn them on and off at your will and up front we have a really nice trigger shifters from shimano you can go three down and one up so you can shift really fast and it's it's a really nice sporty experience it's really nice ergonomic grips with a nice punch out to give you some extra support and the nice hydraulic disc brakes front and rear which give ample stopping power. And for the brake calipers, we have the Shimano dual piston hydraulic brake calipers with a 180 millimeter rotor up front, 160 in the rear. And it's really plenty of stopping power for this type of bike. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this bike or electric bikes in general, just leave them in the comments below or reach out to us. I'm always happy to help. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Well, see you soon.